Hello, good morning and welcome to the Saturday edition of She Wants Talk Breakfast Show with MCL TV. Good morning, Abia. My name is Estella Wando. And if you're watching us for the first time, this program comes your way from Mondays to Saturdays to educate, inform and entertain you with happenings around you. And today promises to be good, so we urge you to say glue to your television set. I am Stella Amando. Now, we we usually start it, we start with uh, the words of Mambo, just to inspire you as you go out for your daily activities. And today's words of Mambo says, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. I'll take it again. We may encounter many defeats, but we must not be you know, defeated. It is just trying, it is self-explanatory, trying to tell you that no matter what you're passing through, you don't need to allow that weigh you down. You need to tell yourself that, look, I am not defeated. I, I need to keep moving forward, okay? And it's coming from every one of us on today's Good Morning Amber. Whatever it is, tell yourself, I am not defeated. Now straight up to the news. The presidency on Friday evening confirmed the receipt of the 2018 appropriation bill from the National Assembly. The senior special assistant to the president on National Assembly matters, Senate, Eta Enan, confirmed development to State House correspondents at about 8.30 p.m. on Friday. The president of the Senate, Bukula Saraki, had on Thursday said the National Assembly will transmit the 2018 appropriation bill to President Mohamed Buhari on Friday. Saraki said this in an interview with State House correspondents after breaking the Ramadan fast with Buhari at Presidential Villa Abuja. And the federal government has declared Tuesday, May 29 as public holiday to celebrate the 2018 Democracy Day in Nigeria. The Minister of Interior retired General Abdurrahman Dembazal made the declaration on Friday in Abuja on behalf of the federal government in a statement issued by Dr. M. Uma, the Permanent Secretary. Dambazal congratulated Nigerians on the occasion and pleads government's continued dedication to enriching democracy in the country. He also urged all Nigerians to thrust and support the government in its commitment to building an indivisible, peaceful and greater nation based on the tenets of democracy. The minister wished all Nigerians a happy Democracy Day celebration. In the past, Concerted efforts have been made to improve waste management in Aba. Though receptacles have been provided at various points in the city, the attitude of the average Aba residents of the city as it relates to waste management negates the expected benefits of efforts to keep the city clean. MC All News highlights some of wholesome habits of residents. The report. Appreciable efforts have been made to ensure that a bar is kept clean. Often, when receptacles get filled, residents of the city dispose their refuse on city streets and dark corners at night when no one is watching. It is not uncommon for residents to wake up to find heaps of refuse at corners and sometimes in drainage channels. Some residents have blamed this negative attitude on the adequate number of receptacle bins in the city of Abba. I look at it as lack of orientation, lack of proper orientation. I think this orientation ought to begin in the home, in the church, in the, in the in school, in government circles, all that our people need is proper orientation of uh, neatness, how to be neat, and how to keep your environment clean. I think all we need is orientation. It's not the time to blame anybody. The reason is that there is no place confirmed for the refuse, so they, they drop it anyhow, and nobody to give them directions on what to do. I think is the inability of government to provide certain education to the people. Understand? Because if maybe after like three poles, five poles, you see a receptacle where you can drop your refuse, people will obey. Poor sanitation laws. Because it's not just telling people, Saturday, last Saturday is a clean up day, you come and do it. It's not just that. What do you put in place? 
after the clean up. Is he just telling people not to come out from their house? People go to play football and the rest. It should be after the sanitation. What they should be doing that after sanitation? Is there anybody that comes out to check whether the environments are they are properly clean? I live at that with The whole of the area. So for you to remove, throw away your dump, you must put it in your car. Come out to the road here. And if you don't have a car, for some people that don't have a car, they just send small children. They just drop it anywhere and go. Understand? So that's the things you check if you if you have proper arrangement for the receptacle. Some residents have also advocated the setting up of a tax force to check indiscriminate dumping of refuse. Such a tax force should be empowered to arrest those caught disposing refuse at unauthorized points and prosecuted. As parents, we need to teach our children that they should not dump, uh, they, sh they should not be dumping a refuge indiscriminately. And uh, we should also, in school, our teachers should create this orientation, teach the children. Uh, this, and the government themselves should set up a task force that would, you know, a, 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 inf infuse discipline. When they come to your gutter and they see refuse like this, the people around should be taxed. They should organize it in such a way that uh, there will be people that will look into it and guide uh, the place where the refuge will be uh, dumped so that they will not dump it anyhow. And even in, uh, in the gutter, they dump it there. Alternatively, those days, the government used to send people that goes house to house. If you, if you have it a situation that maybe this road, on Thursdays, they come to pick your refuse. People now use bags to park their distance and keep in front of their gates. It should be part of the bill we are paying. ASEPA ought to ensure prompt evacuation of field receptacles placed at designated points in the city. Stella Wando, MCL News. Ahead of the 2019 general elections, registered political parties in the country have adopted and signed the reverse code of conduct for political parties to guide their operations before, during and after the elections. The proposed Democratic Party, BDP, was however absent from the signing ceremony. The event which took place at after a two-day workshop on the validation of the conduct organized by the political party's leadership and Policy Development Center of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPSS, was witnessed by the National Commissioner of the Independent National Electoral Commission, ANEC, in charge of election and party monitoring, Professor Antonio Okoru Simbin, the Deputy National Chairman North of the All Progressive Congress, APC Senator Nawa Shaibu, led representatives of 53 other political parties, including the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and Labour Party, LP, to sign the reverse code. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, on the other hand, led all progressive Con Grand Alliance, sorry, APGA, African Democratic Congress, ADC, and 21 parties who were absent at the event. Speaking at the signing ceremony, Professor Kori Simbi, who represented the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu assured the parties of the commitment of the Commission to ensure a level playing field for all political parties in the conduct of the elections in the country. With global digital connectivity through the internet and social media platforms, traders are encouraged to utilize the digital era to improve their business. MC All News paid a visit to some markets in the city to ascertain the depth of digital penetration among traders. The report. Following the invention of social media platforms, the world as a global village has become more interconnected. It is no doubt that the business can be improved through the use of social media. Platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter and others Traders can advertise, sell, and provide services to their customers. The city of Aba is known for its commercial nature, which attracts people from different parts of the country. MCN News sampled opinions on the value of social media platforms and increasing business output. One can put his business or work hand in a television or in a social media. At times, somebody may put their handwork or their business inside the Facebook. People will know, people will see him, people will know what is going on. Someone you don't know can even 
call you to know the price of, for instance, microphone or some of that, and he will just ask you, can I see it? You just send it via WhatsApp. Then after that, if the person likes the quality, then you just transfer money into you and uh, send the goods to him. It's very, very si simple. It's quite good because why I say it's necessary, well, I have many business online without knowing those people. They get my numbers through online, my products, my network, what I did on, something like multiple equipment. So they get it online, they call me, brother, I want to buy this for sand, whatever. So it's good. It's, it's a new development. It helps more business to grow. Food is nice. You advertise your product, you sample your goods, people come the back on you, you know, demand, make demands, you, you supply them. Despite obvious advantages of social media platforms, traders lament the risks of being scammed using these platforms to transact business. They urge traders to embrace the trend of digital trading with caution and adequate knowledge. I advertise your goods through social media, Facebook, Twitter, or any other way. People will see you. It's a risk. You know, we are in a country that the more, the more modernized they become, the more skeptical we become, especially the youth. They used to, you know, use it in a way that makes it detrimental to the business people, thereby finding means to extort money from them. Whatever you're doing, business, you need to be very careful. By like a mobile transfer, someone can do business with you after transfer to you. If you don't watch the figure, you won't get the, the, the figure where. There is need for further public enlightenment on the benefits of digital trading. The movements of goods and services across borders in today's world is enhanced through digital platforms which expand the digital economy. Walker again, MCN News. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and MPC Father said it has introduced measures to ensure the full and effective implementation of its 2018 budget. The NMPC, in a statement in Abuja, said this was the outcome of a top management steering committee meeting to review the first quarter performance report and close out on the 2017 operations. Speaking at the meeting, the group manager director of the NMPC, Mr. Bankan Tibaru, charged all the chief operating officers, COOs, of the Autonomous Business Unit, ABU, and managing directors of Strategic Business Unit, SBUs, as well as heads of Corporate Services Unit, CSUs, to focus more on the implementation aspect of the budget. In furthering the implementation of the budget, Baru said management will do most of the front-end work by liaison with relevant government officials to see that the corporation's budget is signed off on time. And the United Nations on Friday raised the alarm that the cholera outbreak in Yobe State could affect thousands of people. Hence, the organization said it allocated $2 million through its Nigerian Humanitarian Fund to support the response to the disease in the state. In a statement by the Head of Communications, OCHA Nigeria, Samantha Rin report, the body said since the beginning of the outbreak, which was officially declared in four local government areas on March 28, a total of 404 cases and 15 deaths have been reported, representing a 3.7% case fatality rate. The statement also quoted the UN Humanitarian Coordinator for Nigeria, Mr. Edward Callum, as saying, cholera outbreak can potentially impact and kill thousands of people who are living in overcrowded places such as camps for internally displayed persons. And that's more you can take on today's news segment of Good Morning Adia. We'll go for a break. When we come back, more news headlines will be coming your way, but that will be on our newspaper review. Please stay with us. Stop.
Stop Breakfast Show on TV. to set aside our differences so that together we can join hands and build the idea of our dreams. Remember that my word is my bond. Inquiries and booking, contact address hotel and suites at number 18 of Purple Road, Abo Hill, Aba. Telephone 081-000-00895 or 081-000-00896. Address, the pride of hospitality and tourism. Have you heard of Press Cowboard and Heaven Options Limited? Chris Cole is a home of the red image right here in ABBA. Why go to Lagos or Port for your direct image jobs? 
Come to Prescott World and Heaven's Options, located at number 145 at Gwe Road, Aba, for perfect cover page, journals, magazines, brochures, and flyers. We also offer printing services in digital flex and billboard, window graphics, posters, stickers, gift transfers, ID cards, complimentary cards, monogram and car branding. Heaven Options offer you entertainment services like event management, ambulance services with well-dignified undertakers. We can also boast of three months ordinary program in computer training, six months certificate in computer training and one year advanced certificate in computer training. Why not visit Prescott and experience that quality jobs? For inquiries, call 0-8-4-0-2-4-7-1-9-6 Do not deface Abia State with posters. Do not defecate on our streets. Do not litter Abia State. My brothers. I say, what did man will do for this world where people not go talk? If you talk, do not urinate in public places. You know, talk and go talk. What did man will do for this world? I say, make we will do the things where we carry my heart. Now, so one wonder. I be not been so. Keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by MCL TV. Alright, thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Good Morning Abia, your one star breakfast show on MCL TV, and it's now time for us to tell you what the people is 
have in store for us. And as usual, we are starting with a Saturday Sun. At the top right of Saturday Sun newspaper this morning, Nigeria sliding into anarchy, says Yesonwike, as Nigerians to resist rigging in 2019. That's coming from River State Governor Yesonwike. Go to page 11 and get the story. And of course, moving down, the boldly written headline there says, Brutal murder. I watched my brother in law slaughtered. I watched my brother in law slaughter my husband in the presence of our children. Let me take it again. I watched my brother in law slaughter my husband in the presence of our children. Tragic recall by widow of slain soldier. Go to pages uh, 4 and 5 and get the story. Moving down, Fanny Kayode's wife, Precious, delivers triplets. Congratulations to FFK Femi Fanny Kayode. Go to page 11 and get the details of that story. As federal government, SVP family row depends. Equime family rejects 100 million naira reform. We can't only pay in naira. We can only pay in naira, Sari says government. Forget it if you can't reform in British pounds. Coming from the family of late Alessi Kweme. Go to page 10 and get the story. Imo, Buari can't save you. APC stakeholders tell Okorocha. Imo, Buari can't save you. APC stakeholders tell Okorocha. Go to page 46 and get the story of that uh, report. Now move back to the um, Saturday sun. At the top there, late Halim on Friday. Case Halim on Friday. Life without your true love. The story is found on page 47 of our Saturday Sun. Amaka's diary says why some Nigerian wives won't make heaven. The story is found on page 17. Go to page 17 and know why some Nigerian wives won't make heaven. Laughter line, let's legalize prisoners. Wow. <laughs> Go to page 34 and get the story. Mike Awoyinfa on press clips, he says two black men and a royal wedding. Two black men and a royal wedding. We go to the bar page of uh, Saturday Sun and get the story. Now we we'll move straight to the next paper, which is the nation. At the top left of nation newspaper this morning. Is a Yamu or be others the PDP leaders to spend weekend in prison? <laughs> Is a Yamu Obe other Edo PDP leaders to spend weekend in prison? Accused Obasiki of frustrating bail conditions. Edo governor, don't bring me into your mess. Go to page 42 and get the details of all this. Alex Libel, reverse governor, he's back at FSAS commander, says your threat to see us joke of the century. The story is found on page 42 of the Nation newspaper. PDP Abga ADC absent as APC, SDP, LP, 51 other parties signed code of conduct. It's found on page 6 of the Nation newspaper. Moving down, the boldly written headlines that said, Okonjo Iwala's bombshell, we gave lawmakers 17 billion naira to pass 2015 budget. Says said sum was in addition to NAS standard 150 billion naira budget. At last, Buari gets 2018 appropriation bill. Go to pages 5 and 8 and get the story of all this. Moving down $16 billion power project. AFCC begins probe of suspects. Anti graft urgency to retrieve reps panels report. Sets to quiz S ministers, former PSC and top shots, others. Probe not meant to which hunt or bass a job. ACF bars calls for ex president's investigation. Go to page 5 and get the story of this. Ohaneze Tundibu, that's the headline beneath the front page of the nation newspaper. It says, Ignore IPOP's threats. Ignore IPOP's threats. Go to page 42 and get the story. Why I can't live a normal life. Coming from veteran actor Kenneth Okonkwo. Go to page forty, uh, page twenty-three, and get the story of why he can't live a normal life. Then we'll move straight up to the back page of the Nation newspaper. Legislators on the cross. It's coming from Shegu Ayobule on illuminations. Legislators on the cross. Who is afraid of 
Kayo de fire me. It's a big question there, but go to the bar page of the nation newspaper and get the details of this. Spartan fighting spirit. Spartan fighting spirit is uh, beneath the bar page of uh, the nation newspaper. Then to the last on our desk, talking about the new telegraph. At the top of uh, the new telegraph newspaper this morning, a late liberal reverse dismisses Fakorodi's two billion naira suit. APC pushing Nigeria to anarchy says here's some wiki. Go to page seven and get the story on Saturday Telegraph. The next one says Buari Obas and Joss seat under threat. Buari Ushiba Joss seat under threat. That is on the Saturday Telegraph. At the top right there, you can see the picture element of Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Buhari Oshibajo's seat under threat. President will win re election, says Oshomole. Go to pages 4 and L6 and get the story. Moving down, the major headline on Saturday Telegraph says 2019 elections. Sarakai Dogar's supporters consider ADC. I'll take it again. Saraki Dogara's supporters consider ADC as party set to reap from APC's crisis. Mass defection looms in Kwara, Kaduna, Bauchi, and others. NAS members plan to join Obasanjo's group. That's an interesting one. Go to page 5 and get a story. None of my scandal affected me. Coming from Sami Oboso. It's one of page 13 of our Saturday Telegraph. Now beneath that, Imo APC, blame Okorocha for crisis. The story is found on page 38 of our Saturday Telegraph. I pop to Ohaneze, Kanu's disappearance should bother you. The story is found on page 38 of Saturday Telegraph. Now to the headline there with the picture elements of a little girl. Remarkable achievement, Nigerian-American girl born without hand wins handwriting competition. Nigerian American girl born without hands win one handwriting competition. Go to um, page 39 and get the details of this story. Now we'll move straight to the back page of a Saturday Telegraph that has the headline of sports. Showdown in Kiev. Ronaldo Salah draw attention. That's on um, Saturday Telegraph at the back there, but you can get. The details of that at the bar page of um, the Saturday Telegram. It's only sports, sports, sports. Um, that is it with um, the newspaper review this morning. Just immediately after the program, go to the nearest vendor, buy any of the papers, and read more on the headlines that we just read out to you this morning. And you're still watching Good Morning, Adia. You must stop breakfast show on MCLT. We will go for a break. When we come back, the program will continue. Please do stay with us. show on TV. Do that, you are done. You are ready to go. Remember using it. Yeah. So when we start to get these large numbers, the first shipment of AK-47 to the SPLA, SPLM was from who? Guess who? The late Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. We are rebelling against the Arabs, and the first person to rush and give us AK-47. He's another Arab leader. Yeah. Oh, man.
South Sudan. Hello, Juba. Very much bless you are tuned today. It's a very special day, the 8th of July. And of course, tomorrow, our Independence Day, the day we have been waiting for, we will be a new nation. Tomorrow, we shall be free from the Arabs. We shall be free from slavery. So I love to say, as you know, that we have been struggling and struggling for four generations. But I hope you guys are preparing. I know the temperatures today are a little bit hot, and of course, tomorrow we shall be free at last. It's been a long journey to get here today. For us as a country, and also at individual levels. Throughout the struggle, from 1955 to 2005, I have lost a lot of people. Almost the male, all the male in my family have lost, been lost through different, uh, di different battles, different engagements here and there, including my father, with three of, all three of his brothers, uh, my brother, and a few cousins from both mom's side and my dad's side. So uh, um, it's not easy. It's not easy seeing a lot of death as a child. Uh, it's not easy being trained, you know, to be to be a killer, to be a soldier. At that age, you know, it distorts a lot of things in your in your head, you know. So our generation, even though we got traumatized through the process, we must find a way to be good citizens of this country and make sure this country is prosperous, united and democratic. So this particular basketball team is special. The fact that it is the first to represent the country, the first to ever put on a jersey. And to put it on as the first captain of that, that goes down in history. as we know it, because the next few hours we will have a new country, we will be divided into two. That's it, that's the last time we're singing it, it's over. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye!
training huh? when I leave the training when the training is about to finish and then they give you the real guns to train with while standing I cannot do this while standing it was too heavy I could hold it like this up but as soon as it reaches like this the, my, my arm would go down so what I would do is I would sit down like this on the ground and put that and then put it while sitting the ground and then when you are going to get when you are going to area your deployment, you get scared. People start farting. You know, you start like, ah, guy, what's wrong with you? Nobody talks. Everybody's silent. Then you go to your deployment area. When you go into your trench or under your tree, you are deployed. You are scared. And then the, the Arabs start to come. Let's say you are the one setting the ambush. The Arabs start to come, and they come with massive, a lot of cars and a lot of troop armor, and you can hear them from far. Always is at night and you get yelling in the morning. But as soon as the first bullet goes like this, that's it. You don't get scared anymore. I love it. Freedom giver! Thanks to Mikhail Kalashnikov. It's crazy, man. How would you design a gun? This gun, if you find somebody that has been shot by AK-47 on the ground, you will think this person has been hit by a truck. Man, 
He's kind man. He's designer good. For poor people like us. It's not sophisticated. They don't have the night, all this stuff, or oh, silences or anything. But it just kills. Yeah? It just kills. You just aim at direct direction, you just shoot four bullets in that direction. Bang, 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 bang. Somebody goes, oh, motherfucker. Bang, bang, bang. This is my land. Stay out of it. Stay in the north. It's better for you. Training was terrible, man. It was the most traumatizing thing ever. They didn't care whether you died or not. So. the game today because the, the Ugandan side they wanted their uh, basketball federation president to attend the game and he's not here so he's going to fly in tomorrow for Uganda. This is now the changes number 10 if not number 11. <laughs> but we, yeah, this is Juba. <laughs> so when you're in Juba you expect anything. Hey, my room was not building one day so. Yeah. so no problem. So we're playing the game in the same place Juba 1 at the same time tomorrow. After the game? Aye. Even though two minutes is or not, we're just gonna have a party. Yeah. We're gonna create a party. If you lose, some of you will go and cry, no? Some of you will go for their girlfriend, whatever. You know? But if you win, we have a good party. But we can't win. No, no, man. Are you ladies sure you'll win? No, no, no. No, no, ladies, are you sure? We need good. No, man. Let's show them anyway. Can try to get Hello, South Sudan. I love to say you guys are welcome to our special program today. After the independence, the North are still giving us a lot of stress. Now it's about the oil now. They need a lot of money to be paid for the oil to pass in their land, what we call oil transit. But the government of South Sudan is not willing to pay a lot of money. South Sudan depends mostly on the oil, you know, roads, salary, hospitals is being financed by the oil revenue. So we need to know from you, we shut down the oil or what should our government do? We'll be willing to hear from you, pick some of your calls. Anyway, we need to hear from you. Juba City. I think here is okay. A rocket launcher from here. I can aim at my house. I can sit up in my house there. You know this whitish building? Go to the left a little bit. There it is there. 
all this construction here, they all came in the last five years, five, six years. The Sudan government did not want to build anything. They want resources in the south, the oil, the gold, uranium, limestone, you know, the agricultural land. So they want the resources, but they don't want the people who own the resources. They're imperialistic. So, so we refuse to be second class citizens in our own country. And, and the war never stopped really until till we separated. I have my own country now. Yeah. It's my own. You can never it's this is the only country you can you can build, you know. You feel you are part of building it. Feel part of history. You know. I'm somebody who has seen the worst of this war. I have a chance to have my education outside. I was in Australia for eight years. And my house was a beautiful house just on the beach. Very nice car, you know, a good job. The university which I finished wanted to employ me. You know, beautiful. You know, but no, it's not your country. So I'd rather take my chances here. Our problem is that our democracy is still young. It can easily fall back and people can start fighting. Fight for resources, fight for control. It's the same. It's the same. Fight of ideology. You know. The current crop of leaders are former generals and they are militaristic in mind. If they fight it out in a democratic way, good. And if they sink to their tribal groupings and pick up arms, then I don't think we'll have a country. I don't think we'll have a country. Yeah, we can tear it down in it easily. as a unit, we can beat any team. I already heard that Uganda is scared of us because of our size, things like that. You know, but we're going to beat them. And then they come past and tell us, uh, you have to play with discipline, sportsmanship. You are representing our country, so you must play with discipline. Don't push the Ugandan. If they push you, don't push them back. What are we playing? Chess? Is it a game of chess? The chess is the way you sit on the other side of the table and you don't touch anybody. This is a contact game. You know? It's a, it's a violent dance, as an American coach put it. You know, basketball is a violent dance. So, you know, you can't put me in a place and then say, don't shoot. Go into the battle. If they shoot you, just dodge, don't shoot back. 
I'll just leave me in the house. We are going to have a team of Uganda and South Sudan playing a tennis match. This is the first time such event has happened and all this because of the independence of South Sudan. This is only the beginning. We all know that South Sudan has been closed from the outside world for so many years. Not here. Okay. 
and there's no basketball federation person here. Okay? So we are just actually talking to ourselves. Okay? So that we can take control of our game. The coach is not going to do it for us. He's not going to do it. And I don't trust that coach cannot get influence from these people. Okay? How many substitutions were made outside uh, coach's uh, knowledge? Hey. It was a zoo. Remember you? <laughs> that coaching hey. place was a zoo. Yeah. Like monkeys jumping up and down, and now they say the players. You know, we want a meeting where whatever they were saying, they need to say it while we are here. That's what I was. And then we to have say. to respond, and they have to listen. But they are scared. Yep. We could all sit down and tell a girl as money. We're not playing for the national team again. It's very easy. We have a school. People have lives. These people are quitting. We could all say we don't want to play basketball. Amash and Galokala, they took you in the basketball team, they have to treat us like slaves. Huh? We, we have to stand up for our right. Let's leave what happened behind. Let's start refocusing and make sure that we correct those things in the game. All these mistakes, they're not happening in the sports alone, they're happening everywhere in the country. And if we all give up, our country is not moving anywhere. We always have to have the resilience, always bounce back, come back, come back, until something changes. Okay? And I believe something is going to change. show on TV. All right, thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Good Morning Abia, your one stop breakfast show on MCL TV. It is now time for us to discuss, and of course, we have a barista SA Duro to discuss with us. And what we're looking at today is towards May 29, and we are focusing on security. Uh, barista, good to have you on the program this morning. Good morning, Madam Moderator. Welcome, viewers. Okay. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, three days from today, these administration, both state and federal, will have uh, done three years of governance. And of course, this week our focus will be on security, education, health, employment, fighting corruption, and all, also the economy. Our starting point this morning is security. And of course, uh, tell us how would you describe our democracy since the uh, its inception in May 2019, 1990? How will you describe democracy? Well, uh, I would say it's not too, uh, too little, uh, too late. Because Nigeria ought to have been a stabili stabilized democracy by now. Uh, but uh, better late than never. Uh, it's too little, too late. But better late than never. Nigeria ought to have been a sta an established, stabilized, democratic country. Then what now. is stopping them from being, um, from being stabilized? It is a lack of lack of political will, strong political will, and leadership. Most of the people that made strides, giant strides in uh, establishing democracy, good governance, dividend of democracy for their people in the world, they started well. Soon after independence, they brought visionary leaders like Jawaharlal Nehru in India. Then uh, in Pakistan, they had uh, one other leader there. You know, there was a strife between Indi uh, Hindus and Muslims yeah. then before independence. And the, the British people, very good people in India, they, were, they had 200 years of the, uh, colonial rule. They created two states, Hindustan for Hindus, then Pakistan for Muslims. I wonder why they didn't do like that in Nigeria. They are he said they amalgamated not as that and Nigeria together, Muslims and Christians. And look at where we are today. But even at that, if we had had a visionary leader, or, or the leader was given time also to do implement whatever agenda he had for Nigeria, he would have he would have ignited a process that would be subsequently followed by upcoming leaders. But that was not to be in Nigeria. We started with a parliamentary democracy 
under the Prime Ministership of uh, Tafa Belewa. And uh, uh, from 1960 to 1966, there was a coup. The, the coup plotters led by Kaduna, Major Kaduna and Zorbo, they justified the coup by saying that there was nepotism, tribalism, yeah. sectionalism, uh, mediocrity, mediocrity everywhere. And uh, there was corruption also. The same corruption those, those coup plotters talked about in the 1960s is still here today with us. And the same nepotism is still there. The same tribalistic, primordial considerations, they are still there in Nigeria today. So what, what, was that, what, I've, what I've been saying is that it depends on qualitative and purposeful leadership soon after independence. Okay. In India, that leadership was provided by one Jawaharlal Nehru. When he died, his daughter Indira Gandhi took over from him and consolidated on the gains made by the father. So what do we have here? Even in Singapore, Lim Kuan Yu, there in Singapore, provided a purposeful leadership and turned around Singapore. Look at what we have in Malaysia. The same thing, where a 90-year-old Prime Minister was brought back from retirement to set right the rule, right the wrongs, and restore the rule of law. So we have to have a committed leader, a leader who has the interests of Nigeria at heart, a person who wants to see every Nigeria smile, and not a person who has come to fill his pockets, the pockets of his crony, family members, and friends. Nigeria has enough uh, resources to turn this place to be the Africa's Dubai. But nobody is doing anything. Nobody has the will to actualize these things. What is important is the will in a leader who wants to leave his uh, footprints in sands of time. To make a real change. So that is why Nigerians have to be very prayerful people. So that okay. God will wake up this leader. If he say, if he's a Hausa person, is he a Yoruba person, is he an Igbo person? God should wangle the man, put him in a way that he gets, takes over the head of affairs in Nigeria. Okay. Even if it's not a democracy, even if it's a life monarchy mm -hmm. that is going to right all the wrongs in the society, restoring the rule of law, restore uh, uh, merit over mediocrity, restore uh, 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 this equality over over uh, a tribalistic tendency, yeah. then uh, reform the Nigerian military, reform the Nigerian police, reform the Nigerian institutions, strengthen the institutions, and leave a solid foundation for further growth. That is what we need in this country. All right, sir. Thank you so much, sir, yes. for that wonderful explanation on uh, the way a democracy should be established in Nigeria. Now, let's talk about security. You know, uh, three days from today, it will be May 29, Democracy Day. How will you rate this administration in terms of security at the national level? Look, well, uh, every one of us I know, all of us are aware of the situ security situation in this country. I've always said it time and time again, over and over again, that the, the basis for modern society is security. Yeah. Every modern society, the basic foundation on which it is built, on, on which it thrives, on which it, it grows, on it, which it expands, on, on which it uh, appreciates, is security. What am I saying? Uh, even there is orderliness, even in heaven. Otherwise, Lucifer, when he wanted to block the first school in heaven, would not have been pushed down by Angel Michael and his co-angels who are loyal to God. He wanted to ascend the throne of the Most High, he wanted to bring his throne to be one with that of God, and God said, no, they had to stop him. So he brought chaos in heaven, and in order to, since heaven is a, 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 a heavenly place and a, an orderly place, he was pushed down to the earth, and now he's causing trouble all over the place here for us on earth. Now, what are we saying? Orderliness, security of life and property, hands and limbs, head, shoulder, security of people in their liberty to move about, freedom of movement, freedom of private life, privacy. This is the basic foundation of a modern state. Now, let me take you to jurisprudential uh, 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 background of modern state. What do we have here? The, uh, the, 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 according to Thomas Hobbes, in his book, The Leviathan, yeah. according to him, we had a state of nature where there was war of all, each against all, and all against each, which he depicted by saying, Bellum Omnium Contra Omens. That is, war against all, against war against all by all against each, by each against all. Then there was anarchy, there was the life of man was short, nasty, brutish. Then human beings who constituted the society thought saw it as 
uh, the situation as of mm. they now came together by way of a social contract okay. and said let us surrender this our rights to protect ourselves to a determinant woman superior whom okay. Hobbes referred to as the Leviathan. Okay. So when they surrendered their rights to this determinant woman superior, he took over the right to protect themselves, individual rights to protect themselves, and then collectively formed the security apparatus to protect these people. So it no longer lies in individual hands to protect themselves. It now lies in the hands of the state to protect individuals. Okay. Yes. For example, had it been the state of nature, everybody in Naba would be entitled to have AK-47 as their private weapon. Yeah. But now that we have the Nigerian police who uses this weapon, we are asked to surrender our rights to them. So that when you make a phone call, they will come and protect you. But the way they We used to say in Igbo that uh, uh, this is a situation of Sinel, uh, 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 where is your mother? Kokoroko. There's no situation, the situation of no security. So, that is also takes me the, to the definition of, of law by a German transcendental idealist called Emmanuel Kant. According to him, he says, law is an aggregate of conditions, aggregate of conditions, under which the arbitrary wills of individuals may be combined with that of the rest under the general inclusive will of freedom. Very interesting. Yeah. You see, this Uyubo, they are fantastic. He said, an, uh, an aggregate of conditions under which an arbit the arbitrary wills of individuals may be combined with that of the rest under the general inclusive will of freedom. So this is a, a complete depiction of what happens in a democratic dispensation. If you read Thomas Hobbes, if you read uh, 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 John Locke, if you read Jean Jacques Rousseau, a French writer, in his book La Social Contracta, he will see that he did, the modern society is built on security, trust, confidence, where individuals say we, don't, we no longer want to protect ourselves, our right to our personal protection, we surrender to the state, then the state on the, on the, on the, on the, on the other hand will undertake to protect us. Where is the state today? See the Benio killings, see the, the Boko Haram, uh, uh, see the uh, onslaught by... Okay, uh, uh, they, is they, they, yeah, is okay. it really, is really <laughs> this happening? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the way you talked about Boko Haram, that brings us to the next uh, question. You know, uh, when this president administration took over office, uh, one of the things they also promised us <laughs> is uh, defeating Boko Haram. You know, how will you, would you say that they've defeated Boko Haram, though they said they defeated them technically? And tell us the word technically. How did they defeat Boko Haram technically? To, to allege, or to, for anybody to conjecture, you know, there's English language, very interesting language. If only for the conjuncture that Boko Haram had been defeated, that would be laughing in the rain, okay? you know, basking in the rain or sunshine, uh, like the way crocodile and all this uh, snake used to bask in the sun in their leisure time. And that is what it implies. We had first of all Boko Haram had been defeated. We had again that it was technically downgraded. Mm. Then the third one is that it's technically defeated. defeated. We don't know what that one means. All this one portends a, a force. A ragtag force cannot be defeated by the Nigerian army, which is the highest and the best fighting force in Africa, even in the world. Nigeria, the only institution that has that is good in Nigeria, except during its recent during this recent administration where it has been bastardized, is the Nigerian army, mm. the best fighting force on earth. They have distinguished themselves in Congo. In, even in, when Nigeria uh, 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 army went for peacekeeping in Liberia, two hours they got everything under control in Liberia. Now, we are I'm very proud of the Nigerian army. But where are we today? The Nigerian army has now become a laughing stock of the international military community. A, a force that there is no African nation that can defeat Nigeria in a conventional warfare. In fact, you can you defeat any African nation in two hours, in two weeks. Nigerian army. The type of confidence we have in them. But look at what they are doing today. Laughing stock, Nigeria goes to Simbista Forest, they are routed, they are, they are arrested, they are tied together with their uniforms, they are people are killed, nothing is happening. There's no way to fight Boko Haram, Boko Haram to a standstill. There's no way There's to no fight way. Boko Haram uh, to a standstill. Stand stand and we heard that uh, some of our leaders are also behind them. That's okay. the impression we are All getting. Right, uh, thank you so much. You mean that uh, they've not really defeated Boko Haram at all? Boko Haram is still there. 
All right, uh, thank you so much, uh, Barista S. A. Do you're still watching Good Morning? I'll be your one stop reference show on MCL TV. The line will shortly be on the screen right now for you to call us and make your input and tell us how security has felt. And of course, um, reduce the volume of the television set for easy communication. Hello, good morning. All right, I'll do what to call us and um, reduce the volume of the television set, just like I said, so that we'll get to hear you um, very well. If you also have any question to ask Barrister S. A. Duru here, please um, do well to ask him. Um, now, Barrister, yes. a lot of people you know, have said that this administration has only done well to reduce the attack on Boko Haram. How do you, do you agree with that? Before you answer that, somebody's on the line. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, sir. Reduce the volume of the television set, please. Reduce the volume of the television set so that we can hear you. All right, please um, do the needs full, okay, so that we'll, um, we can hear you clearly. Reduce the volume of the television set. Hello, good morning. Hello. Back again, sir, and stay away from your television for easy communication. You know, I, I asked you a question before that call came in. A lot of people have also said that uh, despite the fact that they've not really defeated the uh, Boko Haram, but they've reduced their attack. Let's see who's on the line. Hello. Good morning. All right, go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, you agree? The, wherever, wherever the Boko Haram... It's no longer the way we used no, to see No, you can't say that. I don't agree with that. Wherever the attacks of the Boko Haram people stopped, the henchmen have taken over from there. Let's see who's on the line. <laughs> the you, have taken you, over. You, you, you continue with that. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome to the program. Your name and where you're calling us from. Good morning. Your name, please. We're just the volume of a television set, sir. You need to call us back again, okay? Please do the needful so that we can hear you clearly. You said where Boko Haram stopped in the past. Yeah, the incessant attacks of Boko Haram people stop. stop. The headsmen have taken over from there. So, that, that is that. My friend, uh, 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 one uh, Ghanaian musician called the Kukuseku, he said, All die, all, all die, be die. <laughs> all die, be die. Wherever they, they, whether they were killed by Boko Haram people and planted a bomb or through suicide or bomb, they or they were slaughtered, yeah. ma oh, massacred. Let's see who's on the line, sir. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. My name is Chenna. Sir, Hello. Okay, Mr. Chenna, you're welcome to the program this morning. Your contribution, uh, please. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Hello, my contribution is the mandatory mind is directly on harm to the mother of the world. This is the glory. The car and our brother is there. I mean, I'm the glory. This is the glory. This is the glory. This is the glory. Our military will not be a city policy. And that's the policy we are in, the working policy. We are in the first place, we are in the first place. 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 We are in that is going out there with the other people who are starting with their windows. Why not that is the hand of the democracy? I'm a man. You have to decide. If you need a second, you saw it. You down from the other side of the eye with the other thing there. I think you should say you just have it. I'm sure. When they are asking the people, they say it's good. Before you know what happened, the attack was very slow. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. He was actually trying to say he said that what I said. The Nigerian military they are now playing politics. Yes. Most of them are involved. A politician. A military man. A Nigerian man that is thoroughly professional, but highly motivated, yes, sir, highly skilled, highly professional. Yes, sir, and when did we start losing confidence in the military? I myself, I, if there's nothing I love in this country, I love the Nigerian army. 
I'm a Biafran or I'm from Imo State, I'm a, an Igbo person. But the way the Biafran, Nigerian army prosecuted the Biafran war, they fought, kept the nation in war, decisive battle, stopped the Biafran struggle, recovered Nigeria, kept Nigeria as one. With strong political choice, power, and strength. The Nigerian military has no that, has, don't have that kind of resolve again. I don't know. It, it seems to have been apparent in this present administration. Okay. If a Nigerian army person enters into this town and there's a riot, in 10 seconds, the, the rioters will disappear. But they went to Benue and started disarming. Instead of catching the hazemen, they, they were disarming innocent civilians, collecting dengon. Then after collecting dengon, two days after that, then the, uh, these people attack in those that, area, in those area where dengons are. Okay, let, uh, the thing is, uh, it's disgusting. Let's use on the light. Let's use on the light. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah good morning. Good morning, sir. Your name and where you're calling us from, please. Yeah, my name is Christian. Mr. Christian, you're welcome. Your contribution. Yeah, my contribution is uh, all Nigeria soldiers are uh, over. What proof do you have to say that? Uh, hello? Why did you say that? Give us your reason. My reason is that uh, there is so much killing in the current Okay, thank you. You've made your points. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Why he said that is that they've been killing uh, innocent citizens and the ministry are not doing anything. They're not doing anything. They are, they are say, there is a, I don't agree with Mr. President in all the things he does, his policies, his movements, his modernness, his speak out. But there's one sentence he made in Medugri to the Nigerian ministry. Which I it sent the tears into my face. He told the army that the unity of this country is in their hands. I shed the tears. Because that is what the army is for. If the politicians become senseless, mindless, and the citizens are helpless, the military steps in, yeah. rights the wrong, restores the rule of law. Nigerian military is ours. It belongs to the Nigerians. But these days, Nigerian military is not is, is totally tribalized and totally sectional. They, it's abominable, unconstitutional, for an animal to kill an armless civilian. Even in the international rule of warfare, once a person is being attacked, even if it's an armed com combatant, once he raises his hand in surrender, it is against the rule of war to kill the civilian. Okay, let's see who's on the line. Hello, good morning. Morning. You're welcome to the program, sir. Your name and where you're calling us from. Yeah, um, I, 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 Mr. Aja calling from Abba. Mr. Aja, speak up so that we can hear you. About what the, what the, 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 I want to ask the question. You can see that the, 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 or, based on what I read from, you see the continuation of British, uh, uh, Russia, Egypt, and the rest of the world, and trying to see that in the world. I just want uh, uh, the, the, your guests to differentiate more, more, more about it. And also, another question I want to ask what is the way forward? We are trying to find ourselves in this, in this kind of a situation. We'll get to that. We'll get to the we'll way forward, to okay? Well, we'll get to the way forward, sir. Mr. Christian, thank you so much. We'll get to the way forward. The man asked a very really important question. Christian, yeah. We, their friends lost the war to the Nigerian army. The British, Russians, and others provided logistics. But prosecution of the army was done by the Nigerian army. Particularly the gallant soldiers of the Domas, the Galas, the Jokuns, the Middle Benters. They are wonderful, fantastic soldiers, including the bravery of the Igbo soldiers who are now in the Nigerian army. And the Fulanese also, they are good soldiers. I am telling you, I make bold to say, and proudly too, that Nigerian Vietnamese is the best in Africa, even not in the whole world. Okay, let's see. Conventional now. warfare. I have answer that. Right. Somebody's on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. You're welcome to the program, sir. Your name and where you're calling us from. Hello? We can hear you. Tell us your name. 
Hello. Hello, Yari. What did you say? What's your contribution of what we're looking at today? I want to speak my language first. I want to speak my language. Which one is your language? Tell us. Igbo, Igbo, Igbo. Okay, go ahead. I'm not Biafra. Go ahead and uh, speak on Igbo. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. What I'm saying now is that gone are the days there will be fracas. You will be you you are being slaughtered. You are being, slaughtered. You are being pursued for the slaughter. And an enemy might shows up and say, "Thank God is here." Yeah. Gone are the days. Okay. You cannot say so now because the Nigerian soldier will arrive at the sea. If he discovers that the people who wants to kill you are half Flani people and he's flying, you are finished. He will, he will aid them to finish you. But if it were before, you have been slaughtered, pursued for hot pursuit for slaughter. An animal and they come and fly shows, shows up. You say, Thank God is here. No matter the type, the place you come from, no matter the language you spoke, the army will stop the killing and restore the rule of law. That's why we have confidence in the Nigerian army. But unfortunately, that confidence has eroded. Nigerian army is now a totally tribalized section of the, the society. They are not political party members, car, car, car and people. The Nigerian army will not support APC. The Nigerian army will support PDP. It's never so. But the United is totally destabilized, highly motivated, highly skilled, highly professional. Okay, let's see who's on the line, sir. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. All right, we'll lost that call. The Fulani Hesmen, IPOP, and the Delta Militants have been a serious litmus test for this administration. Do you think that the federal government has handled this security threat perfectly well? Well, uh, justice is not the uh, 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 absence of conflict, but presence of peace. It's not the absence of conflict, but presence of justice. I will see you in line before you continue. Yes. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. You're welcome to the program. Your name and where you're calling us from. Yes, I'm calling from Abam Okay, go ahead with the contribution, sir. I want to thank you and commend you for the program. Thank you. Frankly, the army I knew in those days is no longer the army I know today. What? They are out of the professional of its own territory. I'm not happy of what they are doing. Take, for instance, in Abba Hagar State. The way I mean it, I mean this in a sense, this is half of all. So it is a reminder that they are professional in handling crisis, especially in that area of the world. They have killed the innocent people, and they are happy. They are able to do so. They should go back to their professionality and return and return the standard of pedantry in the universe. So thank you very much for coming to the program. I okay. accept you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, he actually said what you've been saying here, that he has lost confidence in the Nigerian army and of course the way they are maltreating innocent citizens in Abba will come to other state in terms of security. But my army, my own army, my Nigerian army, is a wonderful institution, highly professional, highly motivated, highly skilled, well trained and totally destabilized. But what do we have today? Ragtag soldiers that flee in the face of ordinary insurgent Boko Haram. Peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice. Yeah. You will deny crisis here and there if there's no justice. Wherever there is peace, there must be justice. According to Edmond Khan, an Australian jurisprudential writer, he says, whatever any leader is doing, you should pay attention to the people's sense of justice. Once a person's sense of justice is injured, he can go to any left, even including as signing his own death warrant. This is what the IPOB people do. Well, this, they are disgruntled. In the society, no merit, no uh, uh, equality before the law, no uh, 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 equal treatment of all parties constituting the Federal Republic of Nigeria. No, some elements are recognized, some while some are put on the, shoved under the carpet. People are bound to react. Nigeria, the sixth or you say seventh largest producer of oil in the world. See how people are graduates are driving keke uh, on the streets. Uh, people are pushing wheelbarrow 
and then people selling pure water and all that. This government, if this government were to calm down, look at our macroeconomic policies, bring out a deliberate policy aimed at improving the lot of citizens. Nigerians are the most easily governable people. Give them something to eat on the table, provide good movement, road network, provide maybe constant, fairly constant electricity and then water, good health services. Nobody will bother about Nobody will ask you whatever you do with the remaining of the millions. Okay, let's see who's on the line. Hello? Hello, good morning. All right, so I'm going to reduce the volume of the television set and I'll call us back again. You said Nigerians are... The easily very... governable people. Very docile, very pliable, very humble, very quiet. Nigerian people, how many protests and riots have you seen in Nigeria? If they try what they're trying in Singapore, people will sit on the streets until the government, the, 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 the government resigns. They will carry placards, sit on the streets in the hot sun until the, the government of the day resigns. All right, um, let's come back to our state. But before we ask you a question on our state, let's read on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Chijoke. Reduce the volume of your television, said Mr. Chijoke. Okay. Now. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, I just want to say that we are talking about the Indian uh, director. I'm going to say that people are calling for the Indian director. They are not beginning the same for the Indian director. I'm going to say that the Indian director is from the Indian director. So, if you are lying to me, for the Indian director, I'm not going to say that I'm going to say that I'm not going to call and say that I'm going to say that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. He, he actually said, Mr. Chichoke said that our viewers out there are enjoying Barista. And yes, I'm a, fan, fan, to, to, <laughs> I'm a fantastic <laughs> person. But I say <laughs> the things <laughs> as they are. To, uh, yeah, to interrupt to what you're saying. Yeah. But uh, Mr. Chichoke, anybody, if, if you have any question to ask the Barista, you feel free. If you also have a contribution to add to what he's saying, you're also free to do that. You don't tell people not to call in to hear their views. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Speak up so that we can hear you. Oh, you need to reduce the volume of it. No, 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 no longer. Okay, I will. I will give, tell you an incident, an altercation between myself and a, a, a soldier, soldier at Isia um, Langwa uh, as I was coming back from Calabar. I was driving in my Land Cruiser when I got to that checkpoint because the the, the uh, glasses of the Land Cruiser at, is tinted. He asked me to wind down. I stopped and ran down. I obey them. I like the army people. I have a lot of respect for them. So I wound down. He looked into my vehicle and then, since I couldn't wind down the boot side, he asked me Oga, whether anything. They are very respectful. He asked me Oga, whether there's anything at the back. I said no. He insisted. He said I should come down. He insisted. I said I should come down. He wants to see the boot. I said okay. I came down, put the gear, engaged the gear at back, and came down, opened the boot for him. He saw. Nothing there. Students' papers, scripts from university where I teach. So he, but he saw a bag. This bag that is carried at the back like this, that actually belonged to Shei, my wife's junior brother. So he told me, ah, "Okay, you said nothing is in the boot, but what is that bag?" I said, "Oh, sorry, I forgot that Shei placed his bag in that vehicle too, so that I will take it to the house for him." But it's, they are all personal items like toothbrush, boxers, and all that. It belongs to Shei. My wife's junior brother. Then he now asked me, ah, is my wife Yoruba? I said, yes. Then I said, okay, for your information, let me also inform you. My mother is from River State. I'm a true Nigerian. He said, no, next time you, you, you born, marry, marry outside, I'm new people born this and that. He, he made a joke of me, Traba joke. I told him, sir, I said, sorry, sir. I'm disappointed in you. You are not worthy to wear this camouflage. I thought that you're an army person. He did tribalize Nigeria. He was speechless. You know, Nigerian army, they were very violent. Mm -hmm. Having derogated him in that manner. But what I said touched his body, it touched his spirit. He stood at the, at, like this looking at me. I closed my vehicle, entered the vehicle, started it and drove him. He didn't say a word. I said, Child, this is a disappointment. I never knew that the army has degenerated to this extent. Yeah, Nigerian army wearing the camouflage. You should be a true Nigerian. I'm disappointed. He didn't say a word. And the way he was mumbling with English. Mm -hmm. It seems he's from our, our brothers from the northern part of the country. He poked a tribal joke at me with the camouflage. 
which is not what will never happen, happen yeah. in Nigeria of my dream and the, the army of my love. Okay, let's see who's on the line. Hello. 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 You need to reduce the volume of a television set before calling us. Uh, the, uh, the woman that is actually trying to get to us. Reduce the volume of the television set and call us back again. Now, uh, Boris, let's come to Abia State. How will you rate security in Abia State? Ever since the incident of rampant and incident kidnappings was halted in Abia State by the Nigerian army, following their invitation by the governor then of uh, uh, Uchendu, Theophilus uh, Ahmed Ochi, when he was still in the saddle, they brought in the Nigerian army, they sanitized the place, held up these kidnappers, killed most of them, and restored sanity to Aba and Abia State and East environment. Now, Abia security in Abia State have been relatively okay. And I give kudos to the governor, T. O.G., and also to this present governor. The man is doing a wonderful work in terms of security, provision of infrastructure. He's a fantastic person. So he's doing his best, trying his best, trying to work about up, do, do things in Omaha, Arochuku, all this. He's doing well. So uh, I think uh, even the security, listen, he sustained the presence of the army, although the presence of the army is no longer ubiquitous uh, as it was before, but he maintained the skeletal apparatus of the Nigerian army, kept the peace that was uh, uh, introduced by his predecessor, and things are okay. You no longer hear, though there are pockets of incidents of kidnappings, mm -hmm. but you no longer hear of that kind of uh, kidnappers who enter the town, sack Abba residents, they go on Christmas holiday by September, everybody locks up his shop and all that. It, it will never happen again. Mm -hmm. Particularly, yes, by the grace of God, it will never happen again, particularly yeah. with this our amiable governor, Dr. Okese Victor Ibazo. Okay, so, um, you know, um, one of the administration's achievements, talking about Governor Okeze Ipazo, um, since May 29, 2015, there has never been a bank robbery in the state. Where, Isn't that also a where, 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 where will you rob here in the United States? The army will gun you down, straight away. Our governor is wonderful. He has done all these things, caged everywhere, and then this military is everywhere. Particularly when they want to move money, which usually these hoodlums used to target, then shoot down this and that are police people right? who don't want to let us leave the, co the comment about Nigerian police is uh, uh, for, uh, let it be the topic for another day. Okay. But the Nigerian army complementing the security in the city, in the state, they are doing wonderfully well. No bank robbery. Try bank robbery. In fact, a friend of mine we used to joke about it that if a, a robber jumps into a premises and sees a camouflage of a Nigerian army being placed on the sun to dry, he will jump back again, jump back again because. The army, the military personnel, the even if it's only one person who got him down. So robbers know themselves, they are afraid of the military. And our military, the professional ones, mm -hmm. the, the, the highly motivated ones, the ones that are highly skilled, that are professional, the tribalized, they are a desirable element to be allowed to come around you. Okay, let's see who's on the line, sir. Thank you so much for that wonderful one. Hello? Good morning. Hello? Good morning, you're welcome to the program. Your name and where you're calling us from. Hello? Okay, we'll love star called Thou of Barista S A D. Someone called us uh, who talked about uh, the military harassing uh, harassing innocent students in other states. What do you think the government should do? Talking about the government of Governor Kizik Bazo, since you said that he's doing marvelously well in the area of security. What do you think he should do to reduce such, um, you know, um, treats from the Nigerian military to I our residents? I thank you. Answer that. Can we see okay. you? Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Good, good morning. Good morning. You're welcome. Your name and where you're calling us from, please. My name. <laughs> She wonder you don't want to reduce the volume of a television set. We have no choice than to cut you off. Go ahead, sir. I thank my God, the Father Almighty, the owner of the whole universe, and everywhere that this our governor now, Governor Dr. Victor Okeje Ibazo, is a listening governor. I'm happy he's listening to this program. If he's not listening to it, his advisors are listening. Uh, you have to, if you place your yam, to be roasted in the fire. You keep turning it, doing it well, turning it so that it will roast 
totally complete. Okay. Now, having said this, let me throw this analogy down to the services being rendered by the military here. From time to time, this our governor should call these military people through their commanders in order. The ones that are in Abana, they have started behaving like Aburus in Abana because they have, they, have, they have been influenced by the environment in which they are operating. And you can be in your house and a military man will come and ask you for the receipt, receipt of your rent. Your landlord will bring a military man, he will come and ask you for the receipt, your rent receipt, and even tell you to pack up. Small time, you have a dispute with your girlfriend, and a man will come and flog you thoroughly. That's what we're experiencing these days. In fact, the more despicable and disgusting one is that the military never now collects money, 550, 50, 50, like the police. Disgracing the hallowed institution of the army. The army. Hell, is the governor should step in here to caution, no, cautiously caution their commanders to advise them to desist from these little, little pockets of uh, 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 mis misbehavior. Okay. Otherwise, their stay is good for us. Okay, yes. thank you so much. Uh, that's a wonderful one. So, with all these issues raised by you, Barrister, and uh, some of our callers here, eh, should uh, do you think Nigeria should be, you know, getting ready to celebrate a democracy? <laughs> I just need a yes or no answer. <laughs> no, it's a laughable celebration of democracy in Nigeria. Is laughable. Why did you say that? <laughs> Give us your reason before you answer that. Let's use the line. Hello. Good morning. Hello. My name is Love. Okay, go ahead with your contribution, please. The contribution I'm going to say now is... Okay, um, you need to call us back again. And of course, um, this is not an avenue because um, the way you wanted to say, like you have something very bad to say, um, we're not giving you the opportunity for you to insult anybody. Yes, this is yes. not an avenue for you to do that, okay? Now, Asa, tell us why you said no, that Nigeria shouldn't be getting ready to celebrate democracy. Why did you say My that? dear sister moderator, thank you for this opportunity. We thank God for the opportunity to say our mind. May God still be glorified. What we are saying is that uh, they, they, you celebrate things when you have made important milestones. Yeah. A baby who is born celebrates the first birthday with the pomp and pageantry because he, he has already he succeeded in being into this wicked world for a complete one year, 12 months. That calls for celebration. Okay. Now, I want to ask you simply, what calls for celebration in Nigeria? Is it in Nepal? <laughs> or is it the carrying of the mess of in the uh, hallowed chamber of the Senate? Okay. Is it the arrest of Hidilo Menaya and the man jumped out of the main road, uh, of the okay. moving vehicle and is despite court order, he's still arranging court? Is it the behavior of the government with impunity, arresting people, dealing with people? Is it the killings of the headsmen by the headsmen in the north? Or, or what are we talking about? Decay in the tertiary institutions. I don't want to go there because that is my constituency. Yeah. Having taught law in the Faculty of Law for 26 years in University of Calabar, okay. I know that there's a, a total decree, decree, collapse of the infrastructure in the okay. university system. Do, do we go into there? We go into that area, or do we talk about underfunding of tertiary institutions? And then the universities that are in existence have not been properly funded, and you are creating new more universities, complicating the problems. We do, do we go into that area? We we'll talk about chiga, chiga, chiga. That's we have been night and day while we are talking, talking about, we'll about, talking about it. So, okay. yes, when you look around you, everywhere is collapsing. Everything is coming to a standstill, grinding to a, a wicked halt. Then, what is there for you to celebrate? Oh, okay. Um, There's nothing really. Looking at all these things that you just made mention right now, Barista S. A. Duru, what do you think the government should do? to you know um clean up these whole things that you just made mention of right now so that in the subsequent years we can celebrate democracy peacefully and line up things the government has really achieved a friend of mine and myself we are conjuncturing one day we say god is a nigerian particularly god is an uh, from the eastern part of nigeria we love our god he's a wonderful person how what do we do what do we say how do we do things correct right the wrongs restore the rule of law nigerians are praying people whether they pray in their churches or in their mosques. Let Nigeria pray. Go confess their sins, forsake them, return to God in penitence. God will hear from heaven. He will, he will, he will correct our land and he heal this land. Okay. That is my suggestion. Now, what are we saying? A situation where 
everybody in this country, nobody has the interest of Nigeria at heart. Everybody wants to collect, steal from the Commonwealth, deposit it abroad, and run to foreign countries. Collapse of the medical schools, teaching hospitals, collapse of the uh, uh, institutions in this country, use of abuse of institutions like EFCC and ICPC, to which you want to uh, 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 political opponents. So God should give us a leader after his own heart, whose interest is in correcting Nigeria and moving Nigeria forward. Oh, wow. All right, thank you so much. I believe Nigerians that are watching us from here this morning that the only thing we need to uh, make a reverse of what is actually happening in Nigeria is prayer. So we all need to pray and ask God for forgiveness, just like you said. Thank you so much, Marissa S. Eduru, for making our time to be with us on today's program. We sincerely appreciate your comments. Thank you. The all right. pleasure is mine. I thank you for the opportunity given to me. All right, thank you thank so much. God. You're still watching Good Morning. I'm here, your one stop breakfast show on MCL TV. We'll go for a break. When we come back, it will be time for sports update coming from Kekong Gabriel. Please, please stay with us. to you and of course welcome to today's edition of your program good morning abia the sports segment a walk of fever is around the corner and i'm sure you are definitely aware of that don't forget that the Congolese national team has arrived the shores of nigeria ahead of the may 28th um, friendly against the super Eagles of nigeria today history will be in the making will that man called mohammed salah be able to lead his liverpool team to victory against uh, Real Madrid or oh, would Cristiano Ronaldo and of course Zenedi Zidane and company make it a hat-trick of uh, Champions League uh, winning uh, season. Don't forget that they became the first club to win it back to back. If they go ahead and win it today, it will be yet another chapter of history. Time and only time would definitely uh, tell us. This is I welcome you once more to your program. Good morning, happy the sports segment. The name hasn't changed. My name remains Kekong. Gabriel, we will go over to our first news item for today, which has to do with the arrival of the Congolese national team ahead of that game that will be played at the Yakubu Gowon Stadium out there in the Garden City of Kotako, where the news is that the delegation of the senior national team of the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Congo flew into Kotako on Thursday night ahead of Monday's 2018 FIFA World Cup sent for the encounter with the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We've been told that they ranked 38 in the world, nine places ahead of three-time African champions Nigeria. Uh, the Simba themselves you know, came very close to a Russia 2018 ticket uh, conceding to Tunisia only on the last day of the race. That's to tell you that uh, those men uh, will definitely give Nigeria a good run uh, for their own money. The news also says that the River State Governor, of course you know that man, his name is Ezeo Nyeson, uh, we can, you know, will be chief host as the Super Eagles test uh, strength against the fiercely you know, visitors at the Adokia and Messi Amaka Stadium on Monday uh, with scores of other prominent Nigerians and tens of thousands more uh, to have a last opportunity to cheer uh, their team before the departure to the FIFA World Cup Finals which begins in Russia next month being told that the Nigeria squad include Captain Jolobi Mikel of course you know that man we also have uh, Ogeni Onazi and of course Ahmed Musa who all feature at the last World Cup in Brazil 
as well as Olympic bronze medalist. Of course, you know that man, Shehu Abdullahi, not forgetting William uh, Ekong, and of course, the man himself, Ogene Karo Etebo. These are some of the players that are already in the 30 man provisional list released uh, by the coach of the Super Eagles, Grenot uh, Raw. Away from that one, now we go over uh, to an issue that has to do uh, with Alex Iwobi. Alex Iwobi. Is of course saying that Nigeria uh, would definitely not be setting a target for themselves at uh, the World Cup. A lot of people have tipped the Eagles uh, to, you know, uh, to reach the quarterfinals. But as for uh, the young lad, he is saying that Nigeria uh, would do their best to um, play well at the World Cup. Where the news is that Arsenal forward Alexi Wubi has said the Super Eagles will not set a new uh, set a target uh, for themselves at the upcoming Russia 2018 uh, FIFA World Cup. But is hopeful uh, the team can advance from Group D of the competition. We've been told that Wubi scored his first goal for the Eagles as Nigeria beat host Zambia by two goals to one uh, to open their Group B. Uh, could be African uh, qualifiers for Russia 2018 on a winning note. It will be, you know, scored twice as the Eagles end a comprehensive uh, 4 to win over Argentina last October in Krasnodar. But he admitted that they were, you know, in a difficult group uh, that has the two time world uh, champions, Croatia, and of course, Iceland. However, the 22 year old, you know, who arrived, the Eagles come in Europe. On Monday, I bought a peace airline accompanied by his father, Chika. Uh, Chika, you know, described the departure of Arsenal manager Sevenga as, you know, very uh, depressing. We told that the Frenchman uh, was a key, fi a key figure in Wubi's uh, rise and has been a major source of motivation uh, to the Nigerian forward since handing him his Ghana debut back in the year 2000. And 15. Well, if headed there, it will be saying that Nigeria will definitely not be setting a target uh, for themselves. We're still talking about the World Cup, and the players are talking from it will be. We go over to the captain of the team, John Obi Mikel, that man uh, who you know uh, used to play for Chelsea of England. He was uh, among the Nigerian team that won uh, the, the silver medal out there at the 2005 youth championship in the Netherlands the story of John Obi Mikel where the news is that Super Eagles captain uh, Obi Mikel you know, has charged his teammate to show uh, the fighting spirit that saw them through the qualifiers for the Russia 2018 World Cup at the tournament he said he is happy that the team uh, will go into the World Cup in Russia as underdogs uh, the Eagles are the lowest ranked team by FIFA in the group that has Argentina, Croatia and debutants Iceland, but the former Chelsea star said uh, this will challenge uh, the Eagles to give uh, their best in Russia. They told that Mikel uh, told the Eagles to show the unity that got them through the tough qualifying uh, group that included African champions Cameroon and of course Algeria. We've been told that the, the captain praised Coach Kenneth Raw for his effort on the team. He said the German coach was a major factor behind the country's resurgence after uh, they failed to qualify for the last two consecutive uh, editions of the African Cup of Nations where the story of uh, John Obi Mikel and of course uh, Kenneth Raw away from that one now a bit of Nigerian football, the Nigerian Premier League. We go uh, to Lagos where uh, the director of MFM, of course, you know that man. That man is a veteran journalist, Godwin Enagena is, of course, talking this morning. Godwin Enagena, the news is that MFM's worldwide director of sport, Godwin Enagena, has revealed why the team let go of some key players during the transfer window, uh, saying it is uh, as, as, as such as. Uh, and the players such as Stephen Ode all left MFM. Uh, been told that the Lukoya boys are struggling uh, to match the impressive form that saw them uh, qualify for the CAF Champions League in 2017, having witnessed uh, mass exodus uh, during the mid season. We've been told that the Stephen Ode moved to FC Zurich last year and uh, Ospino Ebe. We've been told that that man has also uh, left that club. We also have players such as uh, Jesse Akila. We also have uh, Musuru Bashiru. We have uh, Adebayo Wahid and of course uh, Wilfred Ame. Uh, all of them, you know, uh, joined the list of those that departed uh, the club. And the club's uh, former chairman said the top flight, you know, side um, accepted them to leave as part of its decision, you know, to put a stop uh, to acquiring players on loan at the end of the 2017 20 
18 uh, season in Nagena. His own rated the coach Fidelis Ilechuku of any blame, uh, stressing that the gaffer and the management deserve uh, some kudos for uh, their contribution to the growth and progress of MFM. FC well away from that one we go over to athletics where Nigeria Queen of the Track Blast uh, Blessing Okabare is in the news this morning. That woman blessing Okabare where the news is that the blessing Okabare will six her first win at the AF Diamond League in uh, Eugenia when she battles Ivory Coast do of Maria Jose and of course uh, Taru and uh, Muriela Ahore as well as Jamaica's Ellen Thompson in the women's 100 meter event today uh, that is today we've been told that uh, the competition uh, whose official name is uh, the profiting classic is one of the IAF diamond leagues elite international drug and field uh, meet and with tango that that woman is going to be there we've been told that the african 200 meter record holder will be making her ninth consecutive appearance at the meeting following her debut in the year 2010 when she ran a time of 11 minutes 3 seconds to place 4th in the 100 uh, meter. The news went on to say that Okabale we hope to go faster uh, than the 10 or 90 seconds uh, she ran into her last week uh, to come second behind uh, Talu in the 100 meter at the opening leg of the 14 leg uh, meet, uh, meeting in that country. Be told that uh, that woman from every coast, Talu, you know, ran a new 10.85 second uh, personal best time to win in Doha and looks set uh, to be between the Nigerian and her first ever Ivory. Uh, victory in Virginia. I've uh, been told that Okabare will also have uh, the double Olympics champion Thompson uh, to contain. I've been told that the Jamaican is hoping uh, to rediscover the form uh, that gave her 100 meter and 200 meter gold in Rio two years ago. Uh, the story of blessing Okabare and what uh, will be happening there uh, when uh, the athlete you know, take uh, to the tracks to show to the world the stuff they are definitely uh, made of. Well, this is where we are going to be trying to cut us on your favorite program. Good morning, Abia Sports segment. Uh, we are not going to be bringing you uh, your favorite program that's talking about the sport digest, but we do hope uh, to keep your abreast as it continues to unfold in the round later game and, of course, for that sporting event. Thank you so much, Kekonga Bro, for that wonderful update on sports. And this is how far we can go on today's program. Thank you for sharing your time with us. I am Stella Orlando. Do have a lovely day ahead and stay out of trouble. Happy weekend.